Hi everyone, so this video is a big deal. It's kind of about, I don't know, like 10 years in the making. So uh, I've got a Patreon, and the Patreon is a dollar in, dollar out. It's literally, you give the money, and the amount of money I get goes out to artists uh, to make new content. Either it's going to be kind of like um, parody, satire, critique, like my Riri Rebirth is, and that um, uh, Drake versus Grey thing that I still have to write. Um, or it's uh, stuff like this, which is essentially just fanfic, um, but it's good fanfic. Um, or uh, then it'll also go to original content. So um, I've got a four pager for uh, Project Re Rebirth that's done. I just need to letter it. Probably do that uh, over the next couple couple of days. Uh, I do a lot of rewriting since I letter my the stories I write. I do a lot of rewriting. Uh, at the uh, lettering stage because you know you get the you get the actual page and then you don't want to cover up good art uh, with too much writing or sometimes you need to um, make something more clear so I have a lot of fun in that regard now with this story it's a it's basically a silent story so the the origin of this actually this goes back more like yeah, 20 years or so so in the mid 90s uh, DC had this thing called Batman black and white and it's pretty much what it sounds like. It was uh, some anthology books with uh, Batman stories are in black and white. Some of the stories were amazing. Some of the stories were okay. Many were terrible. Basically, it was like an anth it was like every other anthology. I generally don't like the anthology format, but I do like black and white art, and I do like the good stories were just great. Um, and uh, I've had this story for a long time, probably ten years. And uh, it's just a one-off. The funny thing is that I come up with a lot of uh, ideas, and then they just go, oh, well, I'll, I'll do them sometime. And then it's like, oh, wait, I'm this age. <laughs> I need to do them now. So um, I think DC did a Batman black and white maybe a couple of years ago. Uh, I don't really remember. But the idea of this was fairly simple. So in the uh, the this page I'm showing you, it's the entire page. It's a 12-panel uh, story done in done in one. And um, then the link for it, so you can uh, get it, uh, is in the description. And um, feel free to, to share this uh, with whoever you want. It's meant to be read. It's meant to be enjoyed. Um, I'm really, I've been trying to make this one forever. So comics is an expensive hobby for me. And I used to have to either draw things myself or fund them. And then things would just drag on forever. Now with the Patreon... Uh, you know, we can be talking about something, I get an idea for something, I write it up, and then it's real, ex it exists, you know, within a couple of weeks. So, the story is um, uh, basically the idea that Batman is kind of a Phantom of the Opera style hero, in addition to being Batman and Bruce Wayne, that his um, Bruce Wayne persona is as much of a, uh, not only a behavioral costume, behaving different than he regularly is, but looking different in that both Batman and Bruce Wayne basically have uh, the same amount of prep time and uh, intensive uh, study and application of uh, costumes and persona. I remember before I went to boot camp, I was reading a bunch of um, books about boot camp and the Marines, and then one of them was an interview with a drill instructor, and he said that he actually literally, when he when he pulls up to work, you know, they, they start early, like 4.30 in the morning. When he would pull up to work at 4, he would sit in his car and become the drill instructor persona. Basically said he was, you know, he, he that's not a natural, you know, the yelling and the, and the over-the-top aggressive behavior and, and very alpha and very macho. He's, you know, he's like, that was, I was basically playing a character. So... In this one, uh, it shows that uh, you know uh, Bruce Wayne is down in the Batcave. There's a charity ball uh, being held in Wayne Manor above, and he has to have Alfred basically put his makeup on, dress him up. But there's another aspect that's more internal in that he is also becoming the public Bruce Wayne in his head. He's having to put away all of his experience and sublimate his real personality to go up and <laughs> basically be treated like a clown by a bunch of uh, people who uh, he protects. 
So one thing I was originally going to do is there was going to be some, it was a little too on the nose. Someone's going to say, oh, he's never worked a day in his life. Something about privilege. I was like, you know what? Keep it simple. The artwork is very evocative. The, the peak at the real Bruce Wayne, which is, you know, partly shadowed, but shows a very weathered, very scarred uh, man. That was the real thing, not some dopey, oh, he's never worked. Oh, but he has worked, you know, a little <laughs> cheese ball stinger at the end. Um, I really like the idea of getting a peek of, at him in his private moments before he uh, goes into a public but fake persona. So tell me what you think about this uh, uh, cartoon, this, you know, one pager. <laughs> it's funny, I, I do this stuff and I was like, man, this could get published by a uh, DC, it's like, eh, I, I kind of wanted, you know, back in the, the 90s, I really wanted to w work at Marvel and, and DC, but uh, I, I'm, I'm starting to realize that my, one of the biggest things is I never made it a 100% push, and that's what I've consistently found with the people who made it in. They might have been working at an ad agency or a video games, but they made that, it was a 100% sustained push. I did it for a couple years, but I was also doing other things, and I was a military but uh, yeah, DC, if you want to <laughs> publish this, my email's in the about page. So um, the the future of the Patreon, it's going well. It's at a, it's about, I think, I, I, my end goal for the Patreon is to have a budget big enough to do a comic every month, would a, which would effectively turn the channel into a publishing company. If I could get... You know, and I, and I see this, I mean, honestly, there, a lot of people, and I'm not throwing shade, a lot of people basically use their Patreon to, to pay their bills, their regular bills, you know, their rent and stuff like that. And um, that's actually kind of what a Patreon comes from. <laughs> Patron, you know, it's, it's a, a Italian. And basically all of the great artists, um, you know, Leonardo da Vinci and all those guys, they all had uh, Padrones, they had patrons. And a patron is basically a rich guy <laughs> who would give you money. And he's like, okay, you're going to paint me. You're going to paint my mistress. But also you're going to have a house and you can paint whatever. But you need to paint me and my mistress first. But they need to be in two separate paintings. <laughs> so uh, Patreon, Patreon is uh, really great because all of these ideas that just would have just sat there, you know, and never been anything. Now they're real. And, and I can do a video and, you know, it's probably get, I don't know. Five, ten, fifteen thousand views. Honestly, that's to me that's like success right there. Like I had an idea, it got budgeted. A, a, a great artist got paid a, a fair, you know, rate, and uh, people got to see the story. I'm very, very, <coughs> excuse me, very much into criticism. Um, I got some pretty hot takes about my uh, first project, Re Rebirth. So I'm really taking that to heart in a positive way and I tried to come I'm trying to come back stronger with this one this is a very simple story um, the, the main thing was that the artist uh, Jason Johnson was able to pull it off and basically knock it out of the park it's basically an art story with a broad concept behind it and just a little teeny tiny bit of dialogue uh, but um, tell me what you think about you know the story the writing um, things you would like to see um, I mean, I think it's possible, maybe not for like a couple months, but if I keep turn, <laughs> turning stuff up, I could see the Patreon becoming big enough that it could be effectively the funding arm of a small company that puts out one comic per month. And I got, believe me, I got enough ideas to keep going forever. I mean, right now I just jawbreakers finishing that. Apex Predator. I also got a really crazy story uh, from Afghanistan that's like 60-70% true um, called Human Terrain. I've already got that. I've got uh, the John Carter story. John Carter is actually public domain. So uh, it, only the first three books though. But if you use just material from the first three books and you don't have John Carter, because John Carter is co copywritten or trademarked by Disney? No, no, it went back to the Burroughs estate, I think. But anyway, the name John Carter can't be used, but um, you can use the character uh, 
any of the characters from the first three story, which is great. So I can do my John Carter. I got tons of stuff enough to like, if I was able to get the Patreon bigger enough that it could continually fund one book per month, I would never run out of stories <laughs> ever <laughs> until death. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Obviously, this one is from the Patreon, so I'm going to mention the Patreon. Thanks to everyone. I need to start doing my uh, drawings. Uh, some of those tiers come with physical or digital drawings, so I'm going to start busting those out. I think I'll just make them all physical. Yeah, and then just scan the digital ones. I need to scan them to make them digital, uh, the ones that are digital. But um, uh, thanks for watching. So the Patreon, like I said, you're seeing stuff come out every day. Oh, and I, I shared the uh, the cover for Jawbreakers. Same artist, Jason Johnson. I'm a real big fan of his. He's from the Team 7 uh, comic. So thanks for watching. And I'm going to have, uh, later today, I'm going to have a, a new comic um, video review and then do Defenders Episode 4. Thanks. Bye.